Hi everyone and welcome back to another helpful mod tutorial video. My name is Stone Prophet, and today we're going to learn how to install mods in 2024, both locally on your computer and on your server if you have one. Let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to valheim.thunderstore.io and that's going to get us to this page we're looking at right now. This is where you're going to be able to find the most information about Valheim mods right now. I did a full server installation video a little while back and it's time to update things. But before you find which mods you want, you're going to need one really important thing. And that's the R2 mod man. And it's pinned right here. You're going to click this. You're going to go to manual download and it's going to download a zip file that you're then going to open and extract and then install on your desktop. Just drag all these files to an empty folder. Call it R2 Modman. Drag them in. And then from there, you're going to run the setup program. Now I've already set up the program, so I'm not going to run that. But after it goes through the whole setup process, you're going to end up with this. So when you start R2 Modman, it wants you to select a game. We're obviously talking about Valheim, so we're gonna scroll down. It's alphabetical. There's Valheim. You're gonna select the game. Select which platform you're playing on. I'm playing on Steam. And then it's gonna load the profiles. Now I have a bunch of profiles. You'll start out with only default here. We're gonna create a new profile called Tutorial to walk you through the process right now. You're going to select that profile and then you're going to come to this page. Now we don't have any mods installed. Obviously there's zero here and this is the online search tab. Now this is connected to the Thunderstore. Now if we go back to valheim.thunderstore.io, which is the splash screen here, we're going to find the same exact result here as we do in our online tab here. So either way, you're searching through the same libraries. If you already know the names of the mods you want to install, there's a search tab right there at the top. You can use that in R2 Modman itself to download the mods. Let's just say we want Infinity Hammer. There's an admin tool and a creative tool. So Infinity, it's gonna come up right here at the top. You're gonna click that, click download. Here you can donate to the mod developer. Always suggest you do that. And here's the website, which brings you to the Thunderstore page. Now, if I click that, I'll show you exactly what happens. Here's the Thunderstore page to that individual mod. Uh, you can also filter it by mod developer and all the change log information is usually listed down here. Here you can select the version if you need a previous version, normally you won't. So it gives you the most updated version. You're just gonna normally select download with dependencies. Now that just means if you don't have Bepinex, which is kind of the mod controlling uh, software that goes along with Valheim, uh, it'll just install it for you one time, not over and over again. So now we've got three mods installed. It, it has a dependency on another mod called Server Dev Commands. We've got Infinity Hammer here. We've got Server Dev Commands here. And we've got our Bepinex pack for Valheim here. Now we could just start modded right here and we would be off to the races with whatever mods we had just installed. And this would be the same process for any mod you want to install on your local machine. Now, if we go back to the main Thunderstore page on their website, we have a search bar here as well. We can search for things. Let's say we want a mod pack. So we're gonna select mod packs up here and I've made a couple, so I'm gonna select one of mine. Get to search there, keyword search. And we've got uh, our Ashland server pack here. Now this is where it's going to give you the list of mods that it's going to install for you. I can do the same thing in R2 Modman if I type in the word profit. It's going to come up with the same list as it did here. It's the same search function, just a different interface. So if I pull up this, I'm going to install with Mod Manager, and that would install this entire list of mods. It would download them right into R2 Modman. Say that five times fast. So again, once you've downloaded all these mods or mod packs, you can go on your merry way and just press this start modded button right here and you can play solo with the mods that you've downloaded. You don't really need to do anything else. Now we're going to get to the part of the video where we're going to talk about putting it on a server. I use ThinkWeb Gaming for my server hosting here. ThinkWeb Gaming has servers for all the major online games available, both survival and not survival. Once you've clicked on Valheim, you can come over here and select which slot amount you want. 
This will be the same process on other hosts, but I do recommend ThinkWeb. ThinkWeb has given me a partner code for you to put in for 10% off of your first Valheim server. The code is SPVALHEIM. You put that in and you'll get 10% off of your first Valheim server. And if you put in the code SP-GS10, that'll give you 10% off any other server as well. Thanks, ThinkWeb Gaming. If you wanted to get to your game panel, there's a button here at the top that says Game Panel. And that's going to take you to your to the main screen where you can click on Game Services. This will be different from host to host, but basically every every host will offer you an interface to manage your profile and then they'll have an interface to manage your actual server and that comes down to the name of the world the seed uh, all the other commands that you can set up for your server uh, through your host much like my previous video when we walked through the server installation using a different host we used filezilla and you can do the same thing here think web gaming uses SFTP, not just your regular FTP, so it's a bit more secure. Now, if we open FileZilla, I'll show you how to do that process. Let's say you've downloaded FileZilla and you've come to this page, but now you want to set up your server. Well, here at ThinkWeb, we've got the SFTP info right there. Now, we're going to copy that. Now, because we're using SFTP and not regular FTP, we're going to go here to File and Site Manager. Here's where you would select FTP or SFTP we're going to select SFTP. We're going to put our IP address here. We're going to put our username here. And we're going to put in our password. And this is just to get us access to our server. Again, this process will be similar with all other hosts. They'll have a username, a password, and a separate FTP IP and port for you to access that information. We're going to go ahead and push connect. You're going to end up with the IP here. And the great thing about ThinkWeb is they give you access to all of the server data. You don't have to worry about being gatekept behind other scripts with other hosts who don't really give you full access to everything or hide things behind different subfolders. We've got base information here, which as an admin, I really do appreciate. So you want to put mods onto your server. Well, it's the same process as it was a year ago, but let's walk right through it. So if you go to Mod Manager here in the ThinkWeb interface, uh, you'll see it right here at the top, Bepinx. Okay, and you would just push the install button down here. I've already got it installed, so we don't need to do it again. Uh, and it would just install Bepinex onto your server, and that's it. Hopefully soon, uh, we're going to have more interface through Thunderstore, and at minimum, uh, more mods available here. Uh, obviously, there are some, uh, but really, we're just worried about Bepinex, and that's all we're going to install. So before you can use your mods, you need to make sure that Bepinex is installed on your server. And that is usually listed as an option on your host's interface, just like it is here. It's always going to look a little bit different. So like other hosting services that host a Valheim server, they almost all will offer Bepinex, which is the mod kind of companion software, uh, to allow you know the server to run mods uh, as a as a separate install feature so here at the command line manager we've got three options we've got default we've got default without the log file and we've got the log and the console enabled uh, default is basically kind of everything uh, in case you don't want a full log file which can get a little large sometimes uh, you can choose to not have that so up here with modify, that's what we're going to click to change any of this information. So we can go to the tutorial, we can go to the server name here uh, and change it to whatever we want. Mine is tutorial. Same with the world file name. If you upload a world file to your server, something that you've been working on locally or something you've downloaded, uh, this is where you would put the, that file name right there. The world file does say file name. So it's trying to remind you that it's the file name, it's not just you know, whatever name you came up for the, the world. And uh, your password, and I've chosen example. Here you can enable crossplay. Obviously that might create some conflicts with mods. Uh, I tend to try and keep crossplay off uh, because it has caused conflicts. So click apply, it's gonna change those options. Once you click apply, it should be saved. The next time you restart the server, those changes will be set. You pull up your R2 mod man and you go to settings. We're gonna to go to browse profile folder. Here it's gonna pop up an explorer window where you're gonna have access to all of the mods and config files locally on your machine. So if you've installed a mod through R2 Modman like we just did, we're gonna find all that stuff here. So we go to Bepinex, 
And the mods themselves, the mod files, are in plugins. These are all DLL files, and they are usually kept in these subfolders right here. So if you wanted to then put these mods on your server, it's literally as easy as just dragging and dropping these folders, or if you choose, just the files, onto your server in the same location. So if we look, we're in X. we've got these three subfolders here. We're really concerned with just plugins and config, uh, mostly plugins because that's where the mods go. So if we have our plugins folder here, we've got these two mods here. We're gonna open up our FTP program, find that X folder here, and we can just drag it right into plugins, just like this. And there it goes. I'm gonna copy those files over, and there we go. Now we've got those mods on our server. If those are the only mods you wanted, you can restart your server and you could just connect. As long as you're running those mods through R2 Modman, you'll be fine. You'll be able to connect. There should be no connection issues at all. Think Web Gaming also has the file manager, which is basically an integrated FTP portal right here on their game panel. So you can do all the same stuff we just did with FileZilla right here. It's the same file structure. Uh, if I go here, You'll see it's the same folder names, same files, everything is the same. If you wanted to access, let's say your world files, uh, you would go to world local, same thing here, world's local, and we've got our world file, our world file there. If we needed to copy it or put another one on the server, uh, that's where you would access that information. Um, and it's the same thing again. These interfaces are kind of mirroring each other. Uh, this is just another way, and you can drag and drop things here. So if I wanted to drag and drop um, from my Explorer window, uh, another mod, let's say, uh, I would just go ahead and drag it right into, I would probably need to open plugins right there and then drag it into the folder. And there it would be. Now I'm not gonna do that now, but it's the same exact interface as the uh, FTP program that you're using, file diller, whatever it is. So again, a nice feature to have available uh, without the need for another third-party software. Some people prefer it. I do prefer it. I'm used to the interface, but it's the same thing here. So if you're just starting out, one less thing for you to have to download. One other thing I would always suggest for anyone using mods in Valheim, whether they're just, you know, as a client or whether they're the admin themselves, is the Bepinex Configuration Manager. There's a couple different versions. The ones by Azumat are usually the best I found. Uh, just download that. That's a client side mod that does not need to be put on your server. Um, so when you run the game, it will allow you to interface with the config files directly in its own little graphic interface in the game. So you don't have to kind of go back and forth or change things because you can update the configuration files uh, live on the server and uh, locally as well. This just helps you do that. Okay, so we've got our mods dragged over onto our server. Uh, we've got our mods installed locally on our machine. All we need to do is uh, start our server up and you're gonna have a similar panel on different hosts that looks a lot like this, start, stop buttons, all that kind of stuff. Now we know right here it says status running. Our server is definitely running now. So one final thing that's really great about ThinkWeb's interface is the ability to stream the log file. Now I know that there are other hosts that do this, but the way they go about doing it is actually kind of nice. They give you the option to download the file like you would normally. And you can do this through your FTP program, FileZilla. You can go to Bepinex right there, and then you're gonna click, you're gonna right click and then view and edit, or you can download the file. Here you can do the same thing, but you can also stream the file. And this gives you a live look at the console of the server while it's running. So if you need to do some live checking, uh, you can see when people are logging in or logging out. You can see what mods are being loaded when the server first starts up, and you can see any sort of connection issues that you might be having. Uh, it's good to have that kind of in front of you while you're doing admin work if you need it. So it's a nice feature to have. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna try to connect to our server. So I'm gonna click Start Modded, and that's gonna start the game. We're gonna get that pop-out Bepinex panel here. If you hit Alt-Tab, you can get over to it. Good to kind of watch that as the game loads up in case there's errors with some of the mods you're using. It does happen, but we've only got two installed, so it should be fairly quick uh, on the load here. And there we go. We're loaded in. We've gotten our game started with our mods that we just downloaded through R2 Mod Man. All right, we're going to push connect on our new IP address and port. 
and we should be popping right into a fresh server right about now. Let's see what happens. Uh, we should be prompted with the password input screen pop up. Uh, hopefully we'll see that. That means we know we're getting connected. There it is. So we're going to put in our password, which saw earlier. Example, all lowercase. We type that in. We should be showing the loading screen. Uh, once you hit that, you know you're about to pop into your server and everything is good to go. There it is. Uh, we should be loading in momentarily. Shouldn't take that long. More mods you have, it will take longer to load. Now we're in. Okay, so if we use the Bepinex Configuration Manager, uh, you can hit F F1 by default, and this will give you your options here. So we got the Infinity Hammer. Here's all the options that are in the config file. Same thing with server dev commands. Here are all of those options. Uh, each mod usually comes with its own configuration file that you can access while you're in game through the configuration manager it makes it way easier so that's the quick and dirty explanation about how to get mods from your local machine from your computer onto your server and get yourself and whoever else you want playing on that server with those mods that about wraps it up for this mod tutorial we've learned about how to install r2 mod man we know how to install mods through r2 mod man we know how to use the thunderstore interface to download mods there and we know how to use the online search tool to download mods through R2 Modman itself. I have a lot of other videos on the config files. I've got a lot of other videos on different individual mods themselves. Go check them out if you're interested in more Valheim content. Subscribe for more stuff and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.